So congratulations on the movie and on, uh, of course, reprising your your role from the uh, from the last film. Uh, Thank you very much. Talking about a third Bill and Ted film for years and years and years. Were you always going to be coming back? I, I always wanted there to be a third one. I kept. I mean, I sort of after Bogus Journey, I sort of wanted there to be a spinoff called, you know, Reaper Madness or something. <laughs> I had I had too much fun playing this character. So I was, if there was ever going to be a third one, um, I, I told them years and years ago, you know, if you write me in, I'm there. Well, Re- Reaper Madness could still happen. It's not over yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too, it's not too late. <laughs> no, we'll all be keeping our fingers crossed for that one, I think. <laughs> Did you uh, find it easy to get back into the role having not played it for, for so long? It was a st- I was amazed at how easy it was that the I I put on the I mean the makeup was the makeup is a pain I mean it's like three hours of fussing and fussing and painting and ball caps what have you but um but as soon as it, once I was in the robes and put on the Czechoslovakian accent he was he just came flying back he was like. It was sort of it was, it was really kind of effortless. There was I felt like I was being taken over by this um, petulant, um, easily bruised, you know, figure. Do you, do you think maybe all of that, all of the you know the makeup, the costume? Do you think that makes it maybe easier to slip back into it? Because I guess when you look in the mirror, it's not you; it, it is death. <laughs> I think so. I I really do think so. And I mean, in a funny way, it's sort of like the. I guess it's like clown makeup in a way, you know, it's like, it's an entire make, it's, it's way larger than life. And because of that, you're, you're completely free inside it. You know, there's no, um, anyway, I found that I was. And so when you finally got the, the script for what would become this movie, were you excited to see what they'd done with death? And were you kind of pleased at, at where <laughs> we find the character? When I finally got the script, I was amazed because it, it had been talked about and talked about. I mean, I've been in conversations with Ed Solomon and Alex and Brian and, and, and just, you know, brief conversations. I think Ed called me a couple of years ago and said, listen, we're, uh, we're, it looks like, it looks like it may happen and we're writing it. Are you still interested? Cause it, you know, been a long time since 1991. And um, I think I said yes in about eight, you know, an eighth of a second later. <laughs> I, said, I said yes, of course I am. But um, yeah, no, I was. I was. Uh, he described before they before I saw the script. He described what was going to happen. You know what what was up with the Reaper in this ep- in this installment, and I was thrilled. That was great. I mean, it's fascinating. Are you surprised by how big a figure this character has become? Because, you know, you look at your incredibly prolific and eclectic career, and I think for a lot of people, this is the role <laughs> they connect you with. I know. I mean, this will be, this, this is what the, what I'll be remembered for years, years down the road. It won't, Shawshank won't matter. And, <laughs> you know, Die Hard and all the rest of them. It'll be, it'll be this one. Yeah, no, I, I am surprised. Uh, I guess I shouldn't be. He's a funny, um, he's larger than life. And he's, and he has all of the insecurities that we all have. And that's what I think what people like about, him. you know, they see them, they see the, the insecure, petulant, you know, um, they see themselves in him, which is, you know that's that's always the that's always the goal so yes i i, I guess i am surprised if, if uh, that absolutely if this is you what, said uh, goes on my tombstone <laughs> and you said it was easy to say yes this time was it as easy to say yes the first time round did you have any kind of trepidation about first taking the role i i didn't i i i had act, uh i auditioned for this um the casting director whose name was Karen Ray back in 1990 and I got a call from my agents and I went I read this I read the script back then you could they just sent it out you know um 
And I went in and I auditioned and I told them ahead of time, I'm going to do this accent. <laughs> and they said, Ooh, you, mm, you probably shouldn't do that because only English actors can do uh, accents. And, uh, but I didn't listen to them. I went in and I did it. And then I didn't hear from them for weeks and weeks. And then I got a phone call from Karen Ray saying, can listen, Bill, you have to come back tomorrow and, and do it again. Same, everything the same, except you go to a Halloween store and put gray in your hair and black out your teeth. And not, they think you're too young. They think you're too pretty and you're too young. So I thought, well, that, that'll look terrible. So I, I called a makeup artist, Scott Edo, who I, I had just worked with on Die Hard 2. And um, he did this age makeup. He made me look about 70. And, uh, <laughs> and I, dro I drove from his house to Orion in LA and did the same audition. And um, then I was old enough to do it then. <laughs> I, we've mentioned that accent a few times. What was your inspiration for it? Where did it come from? Um, funny you should ask. I did a play in New York at the New York Shakespeare Festival called New Jerusalem, a Len Jenkins play. There was an actor in it named Jan Triskin. And Jan, who is still around, I think, uh, is Czechoslovakian. And so I, I had spent a couple of months working with this actor who every time he was talking was like that. Um, <laughs> the accent was on the wrong syllable. And, um, and it was just like, he could, he could read the phone book and we would just laugh, you know? It would, I mean, it was a laugh at him. It was, it just, um, it was charming and it was funny. And I just stole it. So that's, a, that's how I know it's Czechoslovakian because I stole it from Jan. <laughs> No, it's it's really funny that because you know as as you said they said don't do it at the audition and I think when you hear that that's what you're doing you kind of go oh but as, as soon as you hear you speak as death you go of course that's what death sounds like <laughs> it makes complete sense <laughs> I know. I know. what else what else could he yeah. what, how else could he sound um, and I wasn't thinking of Max von Sydow's uh, you know in in uh, the the Bergman movie Seventh Seal mm. that that those associations sort of came later. I was just looking for a funny death. Um, I, don't know. I, I love the seventh. I love the seventh seal of it all. You know the fact yes. that this early nineties like, slacker comedy was referencing Bergman. <laughs> you know, I love playing, that. Playing games with, <laughs> playing these silly games with these boys for their souls, um, and losing. I was <laughs> losing one. You know, one after another after another. He's terrible at these. Uh, <laughs> electronic football are you any good at those board games no would you have given the guys no, a run for I their would, money <laughs> i would lose i would lose all of those I, I, they would cream me i would i would be no good at all of those and so um when this new film came around and you got to be on set with with uh those two guys again with keanu and alex what was it like seeing them just rolling back the years and just becoming those characters again. I was, that was the other thing that I found was uh, uh, extraordinary when we, um, there was saying, you know, there's, there's such a, there's such a buildup. Um, and then there's a little, there was a little trepidation on my part, you know, is it gonna, is it gonna be the same? Is it how, you know, it'll be different, but how, different how? And um, we, when we all landed on the set together down in New Orleans, um, it was as if we had never left the set. It was like, it, it, it was just fun. And it was fun from the moment it started to the moment it ended. So, um, yeah, yeah, they were, they were the same guys. The spirit was the same. The energy was, was the same. I mean, we're all older now, but. Absolutely. Um, and, and I mean, Keanu is now, you look at his popularity now and he's this sort of cult figure on the internet. And, you know, know, it's not just, it's not just Bill and Ted and Matrix. It's, you know, it's John Wick now. Um, I think, I, I, what's I'm pretty it like sure to watch a... his career go where it's gone? It's been extraordinary. It's been extraordinary. I mean, with speed and, um, 
um, it's been it's been really fun to watch. And I, and I watch him as John Wick, and all I can hear him is I keep expecting him to turn around to one of the bad guys and say, "Dude," <laughs> you know, like I was the piano that I know and from the set. Whoa, excellent. No. Absolutely. Um, but is he? It was. Yeah, he's just taken on. It's been meteoric. It's really been wonderful. Which it couldn't happen. By the way, it couldn't happen to a nicer man. He's he's gentle and sweet and kind and about as unaffected by all of that fame as you could possibly be. Absolutely. And obviously, you know, we, we've talked about how much people love your character. Is there anything people shout at you in the street? Uh, any uh, quotes from the film that they uh, keep yelling at you? <laughs> from Bogus Journey, you mean? Um, yeah. They get, yeah, they... Uh, well, first of all, people don't recognise without yes. the three hours of makeup. <laughs> yeah, that's um, it. You're not often out in the full cloak I, with the size. I don't <laughs> often get recognised, but when people but when people know that I was death, then they want to um they, they they i always get the you might be a king or a little street sweeper but sooner or later you dance with the reaper yes everybody <laughs> everybody seems that that line seems to have stuck in people's heads and they, um absolutely i had a cop one time police are very good at faces you know i had a cop got in an elevator with me in a hotel it was, not what you th- it's not what you think um <laughs> we, I mean, um and he said bogus journey grim reaper <laughs> and i was astonished because you know without the without the three hours of makeup and the ball cap and all of the rest of it he just uh, they're good at faces i guess and uh, so what are your thoughts on the way this film's finally getting out there? You know, the release is a bit strange with, you know, some of it in, in theatres and some of it on VOD. Does that affect you at all in the way you think about the film? Well, it's going to be funny to, to for, for a, a film that's anticipated so, so much um, to not have the premieres and, you know, the big the parties and what have you that they usually do, that they used to do. Um, yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be strange, I suppose, but, um, you know, not to be able to go sit in a crowded theater and see it and watch it on a big screen. Um, but, uh, at the same time, I think it's going to be, um, um, after, after the way this year has gone so far, I think people are ready for some be excellent to each other definitely i think that's true i think people and people are more than ready for some bill and ted (laughs) i think so and just finally and i think based on this conversation this is an easier question than maybe i thought it would be if you got the call to play death again would you whether it's reaper madness or not (laughs) would you do it yes (laughs) well well, you have to talk to my agent uh, (laughs) because you know we have to you know there's money and uh, what have you yes yeah yes, of course <laughs> of course i would um, that's, well, uh, i'm sure i'm sure we'd all love to see you we'd all love to see you put the cloak on again definitely oh let's <laughs> see before i meet the reaper myself <laughs> <laughs> well it's been absolutely wonderful to chat to you thank you so much for your time and uh, congratulations again on the movie my pleasure my pleasure thank you thank you <laughs>